Hello guys, so welcome again to my channel. In this video, I will discuss how to solve complex trusses. Okay, so in the last video, I have discussed about how to use your method of section for solving any simple trusses. So what is simple trusses? This is simple trusses. Okay, the basic uh, forming structure is a triangle and in simple trusses, you can see that the truss consists of more than one triangle okay so here you can see that triangle number one two three and this three triangle from this simple trusses okay so what is complex truss okay before knowing about the complex truss i think you need to know about one more type of truss that is compound truss okay by the way all this picture has been taken from the structural analysis written by rc Hibler. okay so what is compound truss compound truss is nothing but the summation of your simple trusses okay here you can see that this is a simple truss okay so this is a simple truss why because here you can see there is there are two triangle triangle number two and triangle number one okay these two triangle form the simple truss and this simple truss form an arm of this triangle okay so maybe uh, let's say this is a simple truss, okay, and this is another simple truss, okay. So if they are connected by another member, in this time this is not a compound truss, rather this is also a simple truss. But if you form a truss like this, okay, let's say this is a truss and uh, this is another truss okay this is another truss now if you connect them by this member of course this whole truss belongs to this compound truss category okay now what is complex truss a complex truss looks like this okay so here neither uh, a simple truss nor a compound truss is exist this is known as a complex truss okay now how to solve this type of truss simply to solve this complex okay to solve this complex truss we will use the method of joint as simple as that okay so what is method of joint simply we assume that at any joint there may be some forces unknown forces okay unknown forces number one and unknown forces number two maybe there are some externally applied load okay and the main basic of method of joint is that at any joint the summation of fx is equal to zero and summation of fy is equal to zero so axial summation of horizontal axial forces is equal to zero and summation of vertical axial forces is also zero and as the number of equation is 2 the condition for applying method of joint is the number of unknown must be less than 2 okay so this is the externally applied load p at joint e of course uh, by using the equilibrium equation that is your summation of fx is equal to 0 summation f y is equal to 0 and summation of moment about any point is equal to 0 okay by using this three equation or three equilibrium equation you can find out what is the uh, reaction here well this is one particle reaction let's say b a this is horizontal reaction let's say h a this is roller so only vertical reaction okay so by using this equilibrium equation uh, you can find what are the vertical or horizontal reaction acting here in this truss okay now this is time to apply method of joint okay so let's start with joint a so if you consider joint a well let me make some spaces here so at joint a here this is known p a is known to you this is h a this is known to you and the unknown r here let's say this is force at member uh, af okay this is force at member uh, ad 
and this is the force at member A B. Clear? But the problem is uh, the condition for using method of joint is that the number of unknown should be less than 2 because the available equation are only 2 in number. Okay. So here you can see that the total number of unknown is number 1, number 2 and number 3. This is the problem with your complex truss. Okay. If this is a simple truss, of course here uh, this situation would not arise. Okay. But in case of complex truss, what you have to do, you have to simply relocate, relocate a member. Okay. To solve or to apply this method of joint. Okay. Now, what are the condition for relocation? Okay. So, how to solve complex truss? I think I have already discussed how to find the support reaction. Uh, we have already started to apply method of joint with maximum number of unknown as 2. Now, we are applying a uh, method of joint, but at joint A, but at joint A, our unknown is 3. Okay. So, we have to relocate a member. So, what is the condition of relocation? That is, we should not disturb the stability of the truss okay so this is the main condition that we have to relocate a member without disturbing the stability of the truss the first option is in joint a either we can remove af so if we remove af okay so now is it stable of course not because there is no member so when I apply a load at this point, this whole part simply squeeze and come towards down. Clear? Now, second option is let's say AB. Okay. So, if AB is removed or relocated, in that case, this is removed. So, again, here there is no member. So, if you apply a load like this at point P, what will happen? this whole part will be squeezed or will come towards left okay so the last option is member ad okay so let's see if ad is removed now ad is removed of course it is stable clear so in this case we will remove or relocate member ad but where it should be placed okay so well the condition for placing it is that when i will replace it or relocate it at that joint again the maximum unknown should be two otherwise we cannot apply this method of joint to solve this truss okay so when member ad is removed if we apply method of joint what will happen here this reaction is known this horizontal reaction is also known okay so at this joint there is only two unknown that is force in member af and force in member ab okay so here by the use of summation of fx is equal to zero and summation of fy is equal to zero we can find out the value of this member or the force which is being carried by this member A and also the value of axial force in this member. Okay. So here once this is known and this is known if we consider joint F here only unknown is this one and this one. Again by the use of these two equation we can find out these two force also. Similarly uh, here at this joint as this is known we can find out the forces in this one and in this one okay so at e there is three member now okay so among these three member these two are already known okay so only one member is unknown so we have a chance to provide one more unknown forces here okay these two are known these are unknown similarly in joint c uh, this is known means this is known and this is also known so in joint c 
there is only one unknown force that is force in CD. So here we have a chance to provide one more unknown. Okay. So replace or relocate AD here. This is the location where you need to provide or you need to relocate member AD. Okay. I think you have got the idea how to remove the member first then how to replace it or how to reallocate it. Okay. So after removing and reallocation, the truss will look like this. Okay. So you have already got the idea where should AD be placed. We have checked between BF, CE. Okay. And CE is the correct location. Okay. Here we have relocate this. Clear. So now the modified truss looks like this one. Okay. So there is no AD member, rather uh, we have replaced this at E and C. Okay. Now the external load remains same, but as we have removed this AD member, there must act some internal load. Okay. Because in real cases or in original truss, there is member AD. That's why there must have some uh, internal force and we have represented that by internal force. Let's say uh, this is X. We don't know what is X. Let's say this is X. Okay. So now the truss is ready and this is time to solve the truss and to solve the truss means to find the axial load or axial force in each of the member. Okay. So how to solve that? Again, we will apply the method of joint. So first, uh, only apply the external load. Okay. Then we will apply internal load X. And let's say in this member, the axial load due to external load is, let's say, uh, this is F E. E due to external. E due to external load. Okay. And for internal load X, okay, the force here is F I, okay. So what is the total force here? Of course, F E plus F I, clear. And we will be able to find all the axial forces in each the member. So first solve for external load, okay. So let's say the axial force in this member is uh, E1. E2, E3, E4, okay, E5, like that. So, in each of the member, you will be able to find the external force. Sorry. So, in, so in each of the member, so in each member, you will be able to find the axial force due to your external load. Because due to this external load, you will be able to find first the reaction, then consider any joint from A. Here two unknown, so you can find out at F this is known, so you can find out these two at B this is known, so you can find out this member and this member, and also at C this is known, this is known, so you can find out the force in this one, also in this one. Okay, so like that, you will be able to find the forces due to this external load. Let denote all of them by e and by some suffix that is one two three so here let's say in this member that is ec here this is coming as e uh let's say this is four let's say this is five six seven so e5 okay e5 is the axial force in member ec due to external load similarly uh, this is the internal load, so reaction is zero. External reactions are zero. Now, again, if you consider each joint starting with A, here this is one, so you will be able to find these two forces. And at B, this is known, so this is known. At joint F, this is known, so you can find this one and this one. Similarly, in each member, you will be able to find the axial forces due to this internal load. Okay. So let's say the internal load is here. We have considered unit. Okay. 
due to this unit internal load here this is coming as your uh, let's say internal so i i1 and here this is 2 so this is i2 okay like that here this was e5 so this is coming as i5 and what are the what is the magnitude of internal load that is x so if this is i5 for unit load for x this is coming as x time i5 okay this is the load in this member so like this uh, you have find out all the axial forces okay just consider member your e b okay so e b this is e3 okay so this is coming as x time i uh, 3 so what is the total axial force in this member so force axial force in member e b is nothing but the axial force due to this external load that is e3 plus axial force due to internal load that is x time i3 clear so everything is known here e3 i3 everything is known except x so what is the value of x well in real truss just recall in real truss there is no member between joint e and c there is no member so of course if i draw a force line here imaginary force line this must carry zero force because in reality there is no existence of any member okay so here the force must be zero clear so here what are the axial forces due to external load and internal load that is e5 due to external load and i5 sorry x time i5 so here the forces in member ec okay in ec force is coming as due to external load plus x time internal load okay am i right yes this is i5 so this must be equal with zero okay so here from here you can find out x is equal to nothing but minus e5 or the axial force due to external load in modified truss divided by the axial force due to internal load okay so x is now available to you and just multiplying each value here just like each value or i3 you can find out the actual forces in each member okay so that is the process for solving complex trust